Hey, hey! Here at the Motion Mill, I'm going to show you how to convert 2D sprites into 2.5D and 3D in After Effects. But before we even jump into After Effects, it's worth noting that sprites could be a bit undersized for standard dimensions. This Mario sprite, for example, is barely noticeable in 1920x1080, and it gets blurry if you upscale it. So you have two options, resize the sprite while preserving the pixel ratio or converting it to a vector image. Resizing is easier and less likely to have errors, but converting it to a vector image means you could scale it infinitely in After Effects. To resize the image and preserve pixels, all you have to do is drag the sprite into Photoshop and click Image, Image Size. In this panel, make sure Resample is checked, the tab is set to Nearest Neighbor Hard Edges, and the chain icon is linking the dimensions. Resize it as much as you want, and then save it as a PNG or PSD file. Easy! To convert it into a vector image, drag the sprite into Illustrator instead. Make sure your units are in points or pixels by going to File, Document Setup, and changing the units in this tab here. Hit OK and then go to Object, Create Object Mosaic. In this pop-up, make sure the number of tiles are the same numbers as your width and height. Your image is now divided into its pixels as a vector. You could delete the original image if you're satisfied. Unfortunately, it added a white background. To get rid of this, click on one of the white squares with the Direct Selection tool and then go to Select, Same, Fill Color. The background squares will all be selected and you could just hit Delete. But this will also delete white squares inside the vector, so you'll have to deselect them or restore them after deleting. With the background gone, click Object, Artboards, Fit to Artwork Bounds. This is so there's no dead space around the vector. Finally, save as an Illustrator file with default settings. When you drag it into an After Effects timeline, make sure you use the Illustrator file and not the pre-comp. Then click this box under the star icon, and now you can scale as much as you want. Now the fun begins. For a 2.5D sprite, all you have to do is click this box underneath this 3D icon. It doesn't look any different now, but if you click this tab that says Active Camera and change it to Custom View, you'll see your sprite at an angle. You can move the camera by clicking the Unified Camera tool. Adjust your sprite in a 3D environment with the position values to move it and the orientation values to rotate it. A good example of this is to make a solid or sprite 2.5D and then set its X orientation to 90. Now you have a floor for your sprite to stand on. One thing to note is regardless of what your custom view is, the video will render the active camera view if you export. To change this, create a camera with layer, new, and camera. A two node camera will always try to face a point, but a one node camera won't. Starting out, I say use a one node camera. You could rename this camera whatever you want and select it in the view tab. Controlling the camera is the same as controlling your 2.5D sprite. That's the basics for a 2.5D sprite. If you could do that, a 3D sprite is just a few extra steps. Place your sprite in the timeline and hit the 3D box icon. Now, open up its transform tab and right click position. Select separate dimensions to split up your X, Y, and Z positions. Hold Alt and click on the stopwatch next to Z position. In the text box that appears, type in index. Now get cloning. Have your sprite selected and continuously press Ctrl and D to duplicate it. You won't notice it at first, but eventually you'll have an extruded sprite. Once you're satisfied with the size, select all the layers of the sprite, right click and select pre-composed, name it whatever you like, hit OK, and it turns two dimensional. Not to worry, in the newly created pre-comp layer, just check the star and 3D boxes and it'll pop right back up. You could adjust your 3D object in the transform tab, just like a 2.5D object. Now you have your 2.5D and 3D objects. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know, and be on the lookout for more here in the Motion Mill.